At this point, you have been reading about the differences between chemical and physical changes. Well, let's say you have a whole apple and you chop this apple up into really small pieces. Is this a chemical or a physical change? No matter how many times I chop this apple up, at the end of the day, it's still an apple. You just have smaller pieces of it. That means that this has to be a physical process. Here's another example. I'm going to light this piece of paper on fire. Is this a chemical or a physical change? When a chemical change takes place, the original substance is converted into one or more new substances, which has different physical and chemical properties. The end result is not the same as what you started with. I have three very large balloons. One balloon seems to be laying on the desk, and the other two are in the air. Each balloon is filled with a different gas. What we're going to do is figure out whether a physical or a chemical change takes place when I pop each of these balloons with a flame. Let's take a look at this first balloon laying on the desk. I'll tell you that this balloon is filled with normal breathing air, so someone blew this balloon up with their breath. If I pop this balloon, will this be a chemical or a physical change? You tell me. Now that you've made your prediction, let's see what happens. I popped the balloon, and what happened was that we've released the breathing air back into the atmosphere. Since the composition never changed, this had to be a physical change. Let's move on to the next balloon. This balloon is filled with helium gas, the gas that's used for blowing up party balloons. If I pop this balloon with a flame, will there be a physical or a chemical change? So what happened? I popped this balloon and the same thing occurred. We started with helium gas and we ended with helium gas. The only thing we did was destroy the container that held the gas. Since the composition never changed, this had to be a physical change. Now on to our last balloon. This balloon is filled with hydrogen gas, the lightest element that, that exists. If I pop this balloon with a flame, will there be a physical or a chemical change? <laughs> Whoa! So what happened? I popped this balloon and there was a release of a fireball, which gives off a lot of heat and there was sound. And I know you can't feel this because you're watching this, but I felt a little dampness or moisture around me. This no doubt was a chemical change. But what really happened? Let's talk about this a little more. All we did was break the balloon, which was the same as the other two times we did it. But the flame was a spark that we needed to get this chemical reaction to go. What we just saw was one of the most basic chemical reactions of all. 2H2 plus O2 yields 2H2O. Now, this same chemical reaction took place on May 6, 1937, when the Hindenburg Zeppelin, an airship filled with hydrogen gas, docked at Lakehurst, New Jersey, right after a thunderstorm. While what caused this accident is not fully understood, almost 80 years later, it seems that there is a consensus that there was a small leak from one of the gas chambers that contained hydrogen gas. And with the presence of some sort of electrical spark, this caused the airship to crash and burn. But the reason I bring this up is that the Hindenburg disaster was based on the same exact reaction that we saw, hydrogen reacting with oxygen to produce water.